I'm asking you to drive worry into a small corner. You gotta worry some. All this negative stuff serves serve some purpose, but the key is for you to be the master, not the servant. If it's two o'clock in the morning and your daughter's not home yet, best you worry. In New York City, if you step off the curb and one of those yellow taxis is coming, best you worry. But here's what I'm asking you to do. You be the master of worry. Drive it into a small corner. Don't let it loose. And I'm asking you to go home with some new faith and some new courage. I'm asking you, don't worry. Drive it into a small corner. We've all got concerns, and sometimes we all wonder, and sometimes there's a little crack of doubt. We worry a little, but I'm telling you, drive it into a small corner. Drive your worries into a small corner. Enemies of the mind you got to do battle with in the summer. One is pessimism that tries to get you only to see the negative side. Of course, there's the negative side. Life is part negative. What else is new? If the glass is half empty, it is half empty. You say, well, I've been only taught to see that it's half full. Well, sure, it's half full. But it's also half empty. I mean, can't you handle that? I mean, you know, that's not too difficult. But here's what pessimism would try to get you to do. Believe that it's only half empty. And when pessimism comes to your mind, you've got to educate pessimism because pessimism is stupid. Pessimism tries to get you to believe that it's only half empty. You got to say pessimism, you've never been to school. Too dumb and stupid to know. Of course it's half empty, but it's not only half empty. It's also half full. I'm asking you to be in charge. Be in charge of your own mind. Be in charge of your own destiny. Do battle with your enemy in the summertime. You got to learn to love like a mother. Hate like a father. Give life like a mother. Nourish. Take life like a father. Father says to whatever threatens his family, take two or three more steps toward this family and threaten them, you'll cease to exist. Do battle with your enemies. Now it's also possible to love like a father and hate like a mother. I'm not saying that isn't possible. Nothing more dangerous than an angry mother. I saw an article in a magazine a little bit ago up in Canada. It showed a man with some claw marks on his back, had his shirt off, big teeth marks in his neck. This man was out in the woods, had his flash camera, saw a mama bear with a little cub. Thought, though, this is cute. Took a flash picture. Mama bear takes unkindly to this flash picture. Promptly chases the man, catches him, almost kills him before somebody rescued him. So beware, mama bear. Love like a father, hate like a mother, give life like a mother, take life like a father, or however you want to arrange it, just so you nourish your values, nourish your family, Nourish what's valuable for you. Nourish your organization. Nourish your customers. Take care of your responsibilities. Feed, nourish. But then I'm also asking you to do battle with your enemies. Take sword to your enemies. Whatever's going to destroy those values, take sword to it. If it's worry, take sword to it. If it's threat, threaten back. You got to be like your bloodstream. Good illustration. Red corpuscles to nourish like a mother. White corpuscles to fight and kill like a father. You gotta do some negative thinking, can't just think positive. Thank God for white corpuscles that think negative all day. White corpuscles say, just show me some infection, I'll kill it. Whatever threatens this body and its future gets threatened. Whatever's out to kill this body gets killed. I'm asking you, take sword to your enemies, whether they're on the outside, or whether they're on the inside. Protect your family, protect your future, protect your values. Love, nourish, but also do battle with whatever's out there to do battle with you. Take your harvest and all that comes your way with full responsibility. Don't complain. Complaining, I'm telling you, could ruin all of your chances. Complaining sometimes starts as an infection. If you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. Do battle with it in the harvest time. Reap your harvest without complaint. It's your crop, you sowed it. You either made the calls or didn't make the calls. You wrote the letters, you didn't write the letters. You were steady or you weren't steady. You did it or you didn't do it. You put together a good day or you didn't put together a good day. Take responsibility when the harvest time finally comes and say, hey, it's my crop, gotta take responsibility for it. I do not complain. And then here's the next one. Do not apologize if you've done well. Next, under getting better, I just want to make you make this list of four words. One is absorb. Develop the skill and the ability to absorb everything. Be like a sponge like you've been today. 
Absorb everything you can. Absorb the sights and the sounds and the color. Guess what you're going to want to do? Go back home and invest this experience into other people's lives. And you can't invest it if you haven't got it. So I'm asking you to appreciate the color. I'm asking you to appreciate the auditorium. I'm asking you to appreciate what's going on here. I'm asking you to appreciate each other. Soak this all up. Soak it all up. It's called absorb, absorb, absorb. Then when you get back home, you can give out, give out, give out. And you'll have an extraordinary effect on the people that you reach out and touch. Here's the next one. Develop the ability to respond. Now I'm asking you, however, not only to be touched. Don't just be touched with the challenge. I'm asking you to be touched with the problem. Let people's problems get to you. Let people's problems touch your heart this year like never before. Be touched. Let life touch you. Don't let it kill you, but let it touch you. The problems that are out there, people struggling with their economy, struggling with their health, struggling with their future, I'm asking you to let that get around your heart. Let it do something to you. Don't go untouched. Don't go unmoved. Don't build up the walls. The same wall that keeps out disappointment keeps out happiness and opportunity. Take the walls down. Let yourself be touched by what's going on out there. Let sad things make you sad as well as happy things make you happy. Let your heart get touched. Here's number three. Develop the ability to reflect. Long after this session is over, I'm asking you to go back over it one more time. I'm asking you at the end of the day, go back over your day. I'm asking you at the end of the week, go back over your week. Make that week more valuable. At the end of the month, go back over your month. At the end of a conversation, go back over the conversation. How did it go and what did you do? Learn by reflecting. I call it run the tapes again of your own experiences. And you say, why do that? Here's why. To develop the extraordinary ability to gather up the past and invest it in the future. What a next year you could have if you pay more attention this year, soak it up, gather it up, and reflect at certain times what's going on and what's happening. And this year will take a more powerful place in your experience. People will not believe the words you've chosen. They will not believe the heart and soul that you've mixed with words. They won't believe the power you've got. A few simple things here under getting better. Then here's the last one, and that's to share. Let us reach out with a long reach, a strong reach, an unprecedented reach. Let us reach out and touch people not just with our opportunity. Let's touch people with our lives. Let's touch people with our experiences. Let's help people with their lives, not just their health. Let's help people with their lives, not just their income. Let it be said if they were around us one week, one month, or a lifetime, that when they got around us, not only did we talk about money, we talked about life. We talked about getting better. We talked about becoming all that you can become. We talked about picking up a challenge. We talked about not settling for less than you can possibly be. Let's do that. Decide that you're going to push yourself. Most people won't do that. Most people give up on themselves easily. You know the human spirit is powerful. There's nothing as powerful. It's hard to kill the human spirit. That when you have a made up mind, when you decide that you want to do something, I was reading something the other day. He said the power to hold on in spite of everything, the power to endure, this is the winner's quality. The hunger, the ability to face defeat again and again without giving up. This is a winner's quality. You have that quality within you. When you're hungry, you don't care about the facts. You don't care about the odds. There's greatness in you. And you've got to learn how to tune out the critics outside and the critic inside. And since I'm going to do this, I'm going to harness my will. And I'm not going to let anything stop me. I deserve this. I'm going to do it until. The other thing is that if you want something, you have got to be relentless. You've got to learn how to become resourceful. You've got to learn how to become creative. When crises strike in your life, and in the Chinese language, crises mean danger, but it also means opportunity. And this is an opportunity for you to grow. And you've got to be so relentless, regardless of what comes down the pike, that you're always looking for a way to get over, always looking for a way that you can break through, always looking for a way that you can win, always looking for a way that you can strike a telling blow. But I just kept on kicking. I didn't have sense enough to stop. I was intelligently ignorant. I didn't know what I couldn't do. So I just tried anything. And the fascinating thing about life, because you can't get out of it alive, you might as well have a good time, you know? <laughs> you might as well have a good time.
guys will have a good time.